So in today's video, I'll be showing you how to use the power pivot uh, function in Excel. This function is used when you have to do uh, data modeling and we, when you have to establish relationships between uh, different data sets in Excel. So we're going to be doing a practical example over here. And in my example, as you can see, I have uh, various sales information. So over here, I have store IDs along with the product IDs, which product they're selling the quantity sold and the revenue they're making on that product. And over here I have a table which has store information. So it has my store IDs and the corresponding store name and the region. And my last table is a product information table which has the product IDs uh, along with their full form names. So as an example here, uh, this store MGC102 uh, over here um, if we look at the store info, we can see this store is called Mountain Gear Co. And it's in the Western Highlands region. And similarly, if we look at the product ID, this JCK ALW01, this product, if we search it up over here, this is the all weather jacket. Okay, so we have relationships between these tables and we want to establish those relationships uh, to build a data model uh, comprising of all three of these tables. So ultimately, I want to link these tables together to create a pivot table, which shows me the total revenue by store. And I also want to establish a slicer where I can kind of determine by region which stores are performing best as well. So I can filter by region as well. And I have a graph going on over here as well. It just shows me the total revenue by the store. But to establish this pivot table, I first needed to link these three tables together. So as you can see, there are some common links between the tables. Uh, the store ID over here, we can link to the store info table because that has the store IDs as well. And from that, we can extract the store name and its region as well. And the product ID we can use to search up and find the actual name of the product in the product info table over here. And also I'll be showing you how to add KPIs so one thing I haven't mentioned is you can actually add KPIs within Power Pivot as well. And we'll be going into that as well in this video today. So firstly, just as a proactive step, I'm going to go ahead and name each table. So this is right now called table three. I'm just going to change it to sales just so that I have an idea of what I'm referring to. This table, I'll call it store. And lastly, this table, I will call it um, product. Okay, so now that the tables have been named, I have to now go ahead and load these up into Power Pivot. Okay, so if you don't have Power Pivot, you simply go into your file, into Options, and into Add-ins, and you're going to select your COM Add-ins and click on Go, and just check off Power Pivot for Excel and press OK. And once you've done that, now we can start loading these into Power Pivot. So now I'm just going to navigate to the Power Pivot tab and I will click on each table and just add to data model. And that's going to load this table up into Power Pivot. As you can see, it says sales because that's the name I've given to the table. And I'm simply going to close off and I'm going to do the same process for the other tables as well, just to add them into my data model. OK, now make sure when you're adding this into your data model, click somewhere inside the table. If you click outside of the table and you click on add to data model, it's going to ask you where is your table. Okay. So make sure you're clicking inside the table so that Excel can recognize the table. So now all three tables have been added. As you can see, this is the power pivot, uh, dashboard. Um, and we have the sales table, the store information table, and the product information table as well. Now we want to establish relationships. But before that, we want to understand what those relationships are. So the sales table is, in my case, it's the master table. Um, it has the store ID. Now this store ID, I can link to the store table to determine the store name and the region. Now, in this store information table, every store ID is unique. However, in my sales table, the store IDs are not unique. They are duplicates. For example, this MGC 102 is over here when it's selling this product and it comes back in row 12 when it's selling this product. Okay. So in this case, there is a 
one to many relationship where there is one unique store in the store table and there might be many stores in this sales table okay we need to keep that in mind when we're establishing those relationships okay another relationship is that our product id in our sales table can be linked to our product id in our product information table now again this product information table is going to have unique values no duplicates however this sales information it might have duplicates because the same product might be sold by different stores okay so we need to keep that in mind and i'm going to go into our diagram view and we can see all three tables okay so now our sales table that's the master table here and the store id in the sales table we can match and link to the store id in the store table now remember there's a one to many relationship because in the store table there's only one store id unique so i'm going to start clicking here and bring this towards the store id in the sales table and we have established a one to many relationship because i clicked here first and then i took that and dragged it to the sales table now similarly we want to establish another one to many relationship with the product id in the product table and the product id in our sales table as we discussed so i'm going to grab this and bring it right over here and as you can see we've established a many to one relationship i actually want it to be the other way around so what i'm going to do is just double click here and i'm just going to change the uh, order of the relationships so i'll bring product over here and i'll bring sales over here and i'll press ok and as you can see we have a one-to-many relationship with the product id in the product table and in the sales table and we have a one-to-many relationship with the store id in the store table and the store id in the sales table okay now this is highly subjective upon what you're doing but if you understand the process if you understand how to link the data and if you understand the concept of the one to many relationship that's all you need to understand okay now i'm going to simply go ahead and i'm going to exit off diagram view go back to data view and for now i'm going to close the power pivot editor because there's something else i want to tell you which is that let's say you have a one-to-one -one relationship okay like product ids and the product info table are unique they only occur once and let's say in the sales info table each product is only sold once for example so the product ids are unique over here as well so how do you manage this in the power pivot because there's a one-to-one -one relationship it doesn't matter how you drag the arrows excel will automatically be able to tell that there is a one-to-one -one relationship okay so in that case you don't need to worry about how you drag your cursor okay but now we've essentially uh, put these three tables into power pivot we've added them into our data model and we've established the relationships with the key columns as well so now the next thing is i'm going to go back to manage here there's one more thing i want to do before we continue on to the pivot charts uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to sum up the total revenue and i won't tell you why just now because i'll tell you just in a moment when we move on to our uh, kpis so i'm just going to go on to any cell and i'll just go equals to sum and the revenue right over here i'll just double click that and close the bracket and press enter and the total revenue was six hundred and fifty three thousand dollars okay i'm going to be using this in my kpis later on and i'll explain this as well uh, but for now i'm just going to go into pivot table and uh, i'll just click here and i'll put it into a new worksheet and here we are um, now what i'm going to do is just right click this and go into show field list so now i have data from all three tables as you can see the product table the sales table and the store table and i can aggregate that data and create my pivot table so in my case here what i want to do is i want to see um, the store name which is found in the store um, and i want to put that store name into our rows so we can see the store names and i want to see the total revenue uh, by store so i'm going to go into our sales information and i'll go into revenue and i'll put it into values here 
So we can see the sum of revenue by store. Now look at this number here. Grand total is $653,040. And if you go back, that's what we calculated over here as well for a KPI. So we know that things are working out like they should, okay? Uh, now what I want to do is I want to add a slicer to this as well. I want to add a slicer with which I can click on individual regions and see the performance by the region. So I'll simply go into pivot table, uh, analyze, and I'll insert a slicer and I'll use it for the store region and I'll press OK. And there we go. So now we can filter by region as well. And I can, for example, see, uh, you know, in Central Valley, we had these two stores and this is their sales performance. And I can clear those filters as well. And now let's go ahead and let's add the KPIs as well. Okay. So I'm going to go back to Power Pivot, KPIs, and New KPI. And I want an absolute value. Okay. It's going to be based on Measure 1. Now, what is Measure 1? Measure 1 is our calculation right over here. Okay. Our total revenue. And that's why we calculated the total revenue. So, anyways, going back here. KPIs and new KPI, um, absolute value, and 70,000 is going to be my absolute value. Okay, and I'm going to press enter, and I can use these uh, sliders over here to determine what color I want my KPIs to be. Anything above 68,000 is going to be green, and anything, any store that has a revenue that is under, let's say, 65,000 is going to be red which means their sales are poor okay again this is highly subjective and i'm just showing it to give you the example um, and i can select my icon styles as well i'll just go with the generic style and i'll press ok now these kpis can be added to our pivot table as well um, so i'm just going to click on here and i'm going to go down and find our measure one and i'll grab the status here and I'll go ahead and put it into our values as well. And I'll rename the status as well. I'm going to call it uh, KPI. And as you can see, there are some stores which are in the red. Okay, these stores are performing below our indicated values. So that means that we need to kind of monitor their performance as well. And we can again filter this by region as well. And as you can see, Coastal Plains, they performed poorly because both stores were under the target KPIs as well. So what we've done essentially is we have consolidated the data from all three tables uh, by establishing relationships between them um, to create a data model and then to present that data model in our pivot table right over here. And we can create pivot charts also with these pivot tables as well. So again, you can just click on pivot chart and you can create pivot charts uh, by your preference as well. Uh, so that's how you can use pivot tables and uh, power pivot in Excel to aggregate the data, to find relationships, and then to present the data. I hope you found this video valuable and thank you so much for watching.